Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we'll be showing you how to repair your appliance. Remember, anytime you work on an appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. In this video, we're going to show you how to change out the KitchenAid mixer dowel pin. It's going to be a very easy repair and it's only take a few minutes to show you how to do it. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can click on the link below or get at AppliancePartsPros.com. When you open up the package, you're going to get the new dowel pin. The dowel pin is what locks the center gear to the center shaft. The main reason you'll be changing it out is if it's lost or damaged and the beater isn't being driven. Before you work on the mixer, you want to make sure all the attachments are off. In order to remove the beater, all you have to do is lift up on it and then turn it clockwise as you're looking down on it. And you can let it go and lift it out. Then we can remove the bowl, which all you have to do is lift up on it and pull it out. Once you have them both out, you can set them aside. Now that we have the bowl out of the way, we can take off this trim ring that goes around the planetary. We're just going to tap it off with a flathead screwdriver and a hammer. You just want to be careful that you don't drop it or that you damage the mixer as you're trying to tap it out. Once you have it off, you can pull it off the mixer. Next we have to take off the groove pin. It's what holds the planetary to the center shaft. We're just going to take a punch and very carefully tap it out. You want to be careful that you don't damage the mixer and that you don't tap it out so hard it goes flying and it gets lost. Once you have the groove pin out, you can pick it up and set it aside. Now that we have the groove pin out, we can take the planetary off. There are some tabs where the screws are. You can go around and take a flathead screwdriver and get up in there and kind of pry the planetary down. Once you have it started, you can jump over to the other side, just kind of work both sides and get it to drop off. Once you have it down, you can just pull straight down and pull it off the center shaft. Once you have it off the shaft, you can set it aside. Now we can remove the cover on the back of the mixer. It's held in by a Phillips screw. We're going to use our Phillips screwdriver to take it out. Once you have the screw out, you can lower the cover down a little bit and lift it off its mounting feet. Once you have it off, you can set it aside. With the cover out of the way, we can take the power cord off. We have to take off the two wires on this side first. The white one's on the top and the black one's on the bottom. You can use a small flathead screwdriver to help take them off. Once you have those two off, we can grab our Phillips screwdriver and take out the screw that holds the ground wire in. Once you have the ground wire off, you can lift this little seal up and lift the cord out of the little strain relief right here. All you have to do is lift up on it. Once you have it off, you can set the power cord aside. Now we can take the base off the mixer. We made a little U-shaped holder that fits right on the head of the mixer so that when we turn it over, it supports it really well. If you don't have one of these, you can put some towels on each side to hold it upright. Just make sure you put something down on the counter so you don't scratch anything up while you're working on it. Once you have the support ready, you can carefully tip the mixer over and set it onto it. Once you have it in place, we can take the base off. If you have the type of mixer that the head tilts up, you're going to have a pin right here that it rotates on. So you want to take a punch and carefully drive it through the other side so you can separate the base. If yours is like ours, the type with the lift arm, you're going to have these four really big Phillips screws right here that we're going to remove. They're in there really tight, so we're going to use a ratchet with a large Phillips driver on it in order to get some torque on it so they come out pretty easy. When you're getting ready to loosen them, you want to make sure you push down on them so you don't strip them out. Now that we have all the screws up, we can take the base off, 
may have to rock it back and forth to break it free. Once you have it free, you can lift it off and set it aside. With the base out of the way, we have access to all the screws. We're going to use a flathead screwdriver to take them out. Once you have all the screws out, you want to make sure you have some towels down that you don't care about getting dirty or greasy because once we break this apart, this is where all the grease is inside of it. So once you're ready, we're going to separate the halves. We're just going to lift up on the lower half here and tap on it to break it free. Once you have it free, we're just going to carefully lift the whole assembly up and set it on the towels. Now that we have the mixer split in half, we have access to the insides. If you're just in here changing a part, you still want to inspect everything and look at the grease. If it smells like it's burnt or you see metal shavings mixed in with it, you may have to clean everything up in here and figure out where the metal shavings came from. And then once you're ready to put it back together, you're going to have to use six ounces of this grease in order to lube everything up. To get the dowel pin out, it's located on the center shaft. We're just going to get rid of some of this grease. As you're taking the grease off, you can just wipe it onto the edge of the housing right here where the worm gear and bracket assembly sits. Now that we have the grease out, we have access to the dowel pin. It's not in there very tight. We're just going to push it out with a punch. If yours is in there, and hung up a little bit, you can tap on it with a small hammer. Once you have it out of the shaft, we can pull it off the mixer. Here's the old dowel pin next to the new one. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can get it at appliancepartspros.com. In order to put the new dowel pin in, all you have to do is line it up with the hole in the center shaft and push it in. And you want to make sure that it's centered so you have an equal portion on each side of the shaft. Once you have it in place, you want to make sure that you lift up on the mixer housing and push down on the center shaft so this goes down and locks into the little cutouts on each side for the dowel pin. Once you have it in place, we can put the mixer back together. We have to make sure we line up the center shaft with its seating point down in the housing of the mixer. And then there's two mounting pins located on the mixer, one here and one here that we have to line up here and here. You may have to move the case seal around a little bit if that pinhole didn't line up perfectly. But once you have it lined up, it should go together pretty easy. Once you have the two halves back together, we can put all the screws in. We're just going to go around and put them all in first, and then use the flathead screwdriver to tighten them down. Now that we have the mixer put back together, we can put the base on. All you have to do is line it up, and we can go around and put all the big Phillips screws in. Remember, you want to make sure that these are extremely tight when you tighten them down. You don't want these to come loose while you're using the mixer. Once you have them all started, we can grab our ratchet with the large Phillips driver and tighten them down. Might have to hold the base really good so you can torque these down really good.
Once you have them all tightened down, I would go around and check them all again just to make sure that they're all tight. Now that we have the screws tightened down, we can lift it out of our base and turn it over. Once you have the mixer on its base, we can hook up the power cord and put the cover on. To put the power cord back on, we're going to lift up the seal and set it back in place. All you have to do is push it down so the rounded side is down. And then we can make sure the wires are over and we can reattach everything. First thing we're going to do is put the grounding wire on. Use our Phillips screwdriver to put the screw in. Once you have the screw tightened down, we can reattach the black and the white wire. The black wire was on the bottom and the white was on the top. When you're pushing these back on, you want to make sure that the terminals fit really tight. If they're loose, you want to take a needle nose and squeeze these together a little bit. If these are loose, they may come off when the speed control plate's moving around. Once you're ready, you can grab the wires and if you need to, you can use a small screwdriver to guide them onto the terminal. Once you have both wires in place, we can put the cover on. To put the cover on, there's a couple feet right here that you have to hook into the body. And then you have to make sure that the seal goes into this little groove right there. So you have to slide it in and hook the feet on and lift it up. Once you have it in place, we can use the Phillips screwdriver to put the screw in. Now that we have the cover on, we can put the planetary back on. To put the planetary in, you want to line up the hole for the groove pin with the shaft and lift it up. As you lift it up, these two gears might not be lined up, so you may have to spin this shaft to get it to go in. Once you have it all the way into place, we have to look through here and take a small Phillips screwdriver because the shaft won't sit down all the way so the hole's not lined up. So we're going to take a small Phillips screwdriver and get in here and pull it down so you can see that that is opening up. Once you get it started, you can grab your punch and line it up so it's totally open and we can fit the groove pin in there. Once you have it lined up, we can put the groove pin in with the hammer and the punch. To put the groove pin in, we're just going to start it by hand and push it in as far as we can. Then we can grab the hammer and the punch and tap it in until it's flush. You want to be careful you don't damage the mixer. Now that we have the groove pin in, we can put the trim ring back on. You have to make sure as you lift it up that it's completely level. If one side's more than the other, it won't go on right. So you need to get it lined up right. And then we can carefully tap it on with a rubber mallet. Once you have the trim ring all the way on, we can put the bowl and the beater back on. To put the bowl back on, all you have to do is line up the pin holes and set it down. Once you have it in place, you can lock it in. Once you have the bowl in, we can put the beater on. To put the beater back on, all you have to do is line up the shaft with the opening and make sure that the locking pin goes in the slot. You can lift it into place and lock it on. Once you have the mixer put back together, you can plug it back in and take it for a spin. Thanks for joining us for another successful repair brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Check out our other repair videos on our site, Facebook, and YouTube.